guess what we're doing today? Live room makeover! <laughs> Hey guys, welcome to my sweet little home. I'm Evie and yes, today we are finally doing the living room makeover that I have been telling you guys for so many months now. It is officially going to happen. However, <laughs> it won't be today. Today is Friday. It's about 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, and so I'm waiting for my daughter to come home and I also have to load up the car and drive to my family member's home which is an hour and a half away from where we live and I have to do two trips yes um I got so much stuff you guys seriously if you guys can see my house right now which I don't want to show you guys because it's a complete mess I I'm still doing a lot of DIYs last minute DIYs um and there's just stuff everywhere so my house is just packed with all their uh, stuff and um, it won't fit one load. It definitely will not. So we're going to have to go back tomorrow morning. So that's why I'm starting today Friday and doing the first load and dropping everything, whatever I can off. And then tomorrow, Saturday will be the day that I will start designing the space and changing up the space not designing decorating the space i'll start decorating and making over the entire space so today we'll just load the car and go to their house and then i'll show you guys the space that i'll be making over all right you guys you guys ready you guys ready because i am so so ready it's been six months in the making and i'm just so ready to give them a beautiful homey cozy space that reflects their personalities mm -hmm. Just finished loading the car all the way pack and full like you guys just seen and now it's starting to rain um, but we are good to go so we're gonna head to the house now we are finally at the house so let me go ahead and share with you guys how the space looks like as you guys can see it is a really big space however there is nothing else besides the sofa and the tv just your basic items so there were three things that i couldn't change about the space one are the sofa slash sectional it is technically a sectional but they had to separate it into two pieces so that it would fit the space since they just recently purchased this and it's good for their dog they wanted to keep the sectional as is two i couldn't repaint the fireplace even though i wanted to they wanted to keep it in its original color and three they wanted to keep the tv where it's at i wanted to change it into a different location but because they did a lot of work putting up there i decided to just work with that so for the space i wanted to be a lot airier and brighter and bigger and so the best way to do that is to add a lot of whites into the space because there's a lot of dark colors already especially the sofas and then the floors are pretty dark with the darker fireplace i wanted to make sure that the space is brighter and airier so i brought in a lot of whites and i also wanted to elevate your eyes up towards the tall ceiling since they have really tall ceilings in the space however you just can't really tell so i decided to create some floating shelves to help with that i also wanted to add a little bit of glam into the space because i know that uh, one of them really loves her glam so i want to add a little bit of that into it and i also wanted to add texture into the space so i brought that in as well and with this entire makeover, I spent about $800 to do this makeover, which is an extremely tight budget. I barely made it with that budget. Day two, and these are the rest of the stuff that I couldn't fit in my car last night. Uh, the two cabinets, one of them that is built and the other one, we have to build it once we get there. I have a few uh, DIY signs I made over there and then some decors up there and that is pretty much it so we are packed and ready to go so 
so we are here and just finished unloading the second load of items and these are all the stuff that i'll be using for this makeover feeling like i don't have enough stuff you guys it feels so little but i guess after everything is set up we'll see how everything goes so right away we went ahead and assembled some furniture pieces i had a few that i have left to do and thank goodness we did that because this cabinet console took us a couple of hours you guys to assemble it just having the hardest time with the doors and the handles uh, but thankfully we got it done and out of the way and then for the last two pieces thankfully they were super easy to assemble everything together Sorry, but that's where it's gotta stay Don't wait for me ay, ay. Don't wait for me ay, ay. I wouldn't catch you if you fell I can't even catch myself Don't wait for me ay, 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 ay. You're the kind of lady that can make my head spin I don't gotta take another drink after that, we removed some of the items out of the space so that would be easier to work with. We left the sofas because it was just too big to put it anywhere else in the house. So we just screwed it off to the side and decided to work on the curtain rods next. So after opening this package, found out there's no uh, screws, hardware that comes with it. I mean, I should have known because I've used this twice already and I keep forgetting. Um, so this is all that comes in the package. No hardware. Is it hardware? No screws. No screws. So looks like we'll have to do this curtain rod tomorrow morning. Since I can't work on the curtains tonight, I'm going to work on the shelvings that I created for this wall and put the cabinet console back. So I'm putting two sets of shelves here and then two more on this side. Um, hopefully I can make them look symmetrical because this wall is actually uneven. You can't really tell by looking at, by looking at with your eyes, but, um, measuring it, it is off by like an inch or two. So not too big of a difference, but hopefully we can make it look symmetrical and even on both sides. So let me share a secret. You're the reason for this feeling. So I thought my phone was recording when we were figuring out the configurations for the uh, shelvings to go. Didn't record, of course. Um, so these markings are where the studs are at. And this one is where the TV is lined up. My shelf, the shelf that I created uh, is about like 46 inches and a quarter or something like that. And this is like... 46 and a half inches so it's barely barely um barely short enough to fit this wall um and then we also marked where the first shelf would go and then i think the second shelf is going to go somewhere in between this area so that's how it's going along taking a lot more time and work but it's going to look really good I can't wait for this finish reveal. So I created four floating picture shelves for the walls. And whenever you are hanging up any kind of shelvings or anything heavy up to the wall, I highly recommend you to screw them onto these studs just as a safety precaution and just to make sure that it doesn't fall and that you don't have to worry about it later on. So for us, we went ahead and created pilot holes on our shelves. And how we did that was that we transferred the measurements from the wall to our shelves. I highly recommend that as well. It just makes it easier when you are ready to hang up your shelves. Day three of this makeover and we're about to head to Walmart again. We actually spent three hours yesterday looking for supplies. That's why we started pretty late yesterday. Um, but we're having to go back to Walmart again to get some more stuff. We were planning to go back home last night, but we got done around one in the morning. We were super tired and exhausted. So we decided to stay the night here. Um, my family members already knew about it. Uh, they're not home because I kicked them out officially yesterday. So I told them don't come back home until I tell you guys so because I don't want them to see anything. I want them to be super, super surprised. 
So anyways, we slept here last night, so we didn't go back home and get the things we needed. Something I realized <laughs> is that I need to bring everything with me, anything and everything, because you never know what's gonna go wrong while doing these makeovers, especially if you're not at home. If I was at home, I can easily fix these problems, but I'm not at home, I'm an hour and a half away, so now I know for future makeovers, um, to just bring everything I need, no matter what it is, just bring it all because you never know what you'll need. Um, so yeah, um, last night we got done with this wall and then we were trying to figure out this wall. These studs were just being super complicated. Uh, we had two stud readers and they were giving us two different answers. So we took all night, well, my husband, my poor husband, he took all night trying to figure out where the studs were because normal studs are about 16 inches apart, like 14 to 16 inches, but whoever built this house, I guess the way they built it, it's not really symmetrical or I don't know, it's super complicated. All I know is that we spent two hours trying to figure it out and yeah, we finally realized where it is approximately. So hopefully it is there because we want to make sure that the shelvings we are putting up on the wall is going to not fall off because that's gonna be really, really bad. And that's why we took forever trying to find the studs because I don't want the shelvings to fall out. Anyways, we are going to go to Walmart and get the last minute supplies. And I just want everything to be done because today is reveal day for my family members. So I'm super excited for them to see that. However, nothing has really changed much. So it still looks very bare in here. I still gotta finish it. It's Oh my gosh, I, I have a lot to do and very little time. So, all right, let's get going. <laughs> Once we got back, we went ahead and worked on the stuff that we couldn't get done last night, which is hanging up the rest of the shelves and the curtain rods because we ran out of screws. And so that was one of the reasons why we had to go to Walmart super early in the morning. When hanging up curtain rods, I highly recommend to hang it where the studs are. If you don't have a stud reader, you can use anchors in order for your screws to go in. That way it is secure and it won't fall off, especially if you have drywalls. So with ours, to our surprise, we didn't realize that where we were putting our anchors, there were also a stud there. We didn't even bother to look for the studs just because we didn't think the studs were going to be there. But every single point where we put our anchors in, there was a stud. So ours is going to be super, super secure. So I love using these curtains from Ikea because it's super affordable and they look really nice. It does have a sheer side to it. And with these curtains, I'm using these little hooks to hook it up so that it just looks a little bit more uh, luxurious, nicer, more high end. So I purchased two packs of the curtains and two packs of the hooks and with the hooks it comes in a set of 10 which is perfect for the uh, two panels so I'm able to put five hooks in each panel. A trick that I use to hang up my curtains is to hook the ends first and then I hook the middle section once I fold it in half and then with that I fold it in half again and then I uh, hook where those two middles are at that way they are evenly spaced out. Once the curtains were hung and good to go, I went ahead and worked on the gallery wall, which is opposite the curtains. I really wanted to give them a gallery wall because that's what they wanted as well. I kept it very simple, very modern, and a lot of the pieces that are on the gallery wall are a bunch of DIYs that I made for them. So it's very personal and adds a really nice touch to the overall space. Moving to the side where the fireplace is at, I moved the two cabinet consoles to both ends of the fireplace and then I decorated the floating picture shelves with a bunch of decors from greeneries to candles to picture frames and a lot of these decors are either thrifted from Dollar Tree, DIYs that I made or they were super inexpensive from regular stores. 
For the floating shelves, I kept it very minimal and simple, but I still use a lot of pieces that definitely speaks to them and reflects their personality. I also kept it very minimal so that in the future, if they want to add more to it, they definitely can do so. So my first purchase for this makeover was actually this giant rug that I purchased from Home Depot. It is a 9 foot by 12 foot rug that cost me only $140, you guys. Yes, yes, yes. I got super lucky. I got it during a time Home Depot was having a sale back in October. So I definitely scored on this rug and this rug was definitely what they needed in their space. It really helps brighten up the space, makes it feel so big and so cozy. So I'm so glad I was able to snag this rug. So yes, I know I didn't work in the order that you're supposed to when you decorate a space, but I went ahead and worked in sections instead, which worked for me. Um, but mainly it was because I was running out of time. It was nine o'clock by the time I finished filming this, you guys. Yes, super late. And this was the weekend that I could only come and do their space because the weekend after that, we were having parties and stuff like that at their house. So it was really on a time crunch. Um, but regardless, definitely decorate it in whatever order you want to decorate your home in because I don't think it really matters because in the end, it still looked amazing. Anyways, I'm jumping ahead. Um, so all I have left to do was to add my coffee tables and end tables, lighting and my finishing touches. And then we are officially done with this makeover, you guys. I'm so serious. Um, I can't believe I am done, done, done. And I can't wait for you guys to see the big reveal. You said, son, you remember this day for the rest of your life. Are you guys ready to see my extreme living room makeover that was on a super tight budget? Well, here it is. Butterflies are floating like your red hair in the breeze. So unfortunately, I didn't record their reaction for this makeover. I really wanted to and they agreed to at first, but then last minute decided not to, which is perfectly fine because that is their privacy and so I respect that. But I really wish that I had because their reaction was just so raw, so real, seeing how shocked, how surprised, but yet at the same time so amazed and in all of the makeover i really wish that i was able to capture it and just at least you know show it back to them but they really did love the space i'll insert the comments that they left for me and i'll share that with you guys so you guys can see how thrilled they were with this makeover anyways let me know what you guys thought about this living room makeover does it look like a farmhouse glam type of living room because that's what i was going for a little bit of farmhouse a little bit of glam as well as some touches of modern and traditional all mixed together into the space they didn't really mind the style as long as it all blend well and work well with one another so i kind of have free range on the styling and decorating but i knew that uh, one of them really loved her glam so i wanted to incorporate that into the space as well as keep the traditional look since the space is a bit more traditional but yes, let me know your honest opinion about this makeover. I'm super curious to know uh, because this is the first time that I made over someone else's space that isn't mine. So I'm really curious to see what you guys think of my work and how I did. Um, this is something that I want to do more in the future. And so this is why I decided to test the waters and see if I am capable of doing this. Even though it was super challenging and stressful at time, I had so much fun 
fun doing it and i realized that i really want to do more of these in the future so hopefully i can do more of those all right you guys thank you so much for joining me i hope you guys had enjoyed watching this makeover have a blessed and wonderful new year and i'll see you guys in 2022